we're looking forward to getting ready to play again. We have a really good basketball team coming in here tomorrow with some very good individual players. They uh, obviously have the nation's leading scorer, or one of the nation's leading scorers, in uh, Kyle Vinales. And I think it's going to be a good test for us defensively. They're a team that's averaging roughly 75 points per game. Run a lot of pick and rolls. They're very athletic and quick, and they like to push the pace. So uh, we're going to have to get back in transition, get our defense set, and do a really good job of defending them. And you really want to do a good job of defending without fouling because they're also the nation's leading free throw shooting team. So it should be a very good test for us. When you, have, when you have a team that's, that's play, it has a week off and has another week off, is it a positive that is, a, I guess the question I'm thinking of is, do they go into the game more focused because they haven't played in a while, or is it a rust factor? I don't think there's anything like that. I think we've done a really good job of balancing preparation, but also individual skill development throughout the week, film study. We prepare for this one like we do every other one. And uh, I think our team is ready to play somebody else. Uh, but they also understand that we've had really good balance throughout the week, and we should have great energy tomorrow night. What is it about uh, Vinales that, that stands out? What makes him a good, as good of a player as he is? I think he can score in a variety of ways. He can beat you off the dribble. He can go right or left. He can shoot the pull-up. He's got a step back to his game. Uh, he does a terrific job of getting angles, whether it's beating you off the dribble or coming off the pick and roll. And when he gets an angle, he's very difficult to stop. So you got to keep him outside the elbows, and you got to keep your chest in front, and he can get no open looks. When you, uh, when you get the full strength, everybody's healthy, everybody's eligible and something, do you really anticipate using the full court pressure a lot more than you're doing using right now? I don't know if a lot more would be the case. I think a lot of it has to do with game preparation and who the opponent is and what we need for that game. We're, we're really a big game plan type team type program, and so if we feel like that fits into the game plan and what we want to do, then we'll utilize it. Fortunately, we've got a lot of versatility on our team, so we can show you quite a few different looks. I would say with the guys that have been out, and particularly Hunter and Peter, uh, they will cover up a lot more mistakes on guarding the dribble because they can erase those mistakes for you. So it will add another shot blocker or two for us. But Cody's obviously done a very good job with that as well. And we want to try to do the best that we can to keep our guy in front because once you start rotating the block shots, then it can hurt you with your block outs and your rebounding. I just didn't know that that, that would become maybe a calling card for you. Again, when you get at full strength, um, that, that it's kind of like, oh, we got to worry about Indiana's press a lot as opposed to game by game. I, I think the stress of the pressure and being there for 40 minutes, I think, benefits you. I think when you play better teams, they don't allow that stuff to affect them as much, but you start to bring fatigue into the game as you wear on late into the game, and then hopefully you get a turnover or a deflection that you need. Um, we have really good athletic ability, and we can come at you in waves, and that's what we really want to be as a presence for that entire 40 minutes, and it depends on what type of press we use, whether it's full court man or we go three quarter court or even some half court stuff. There's always talk about this team bringing fatigue to the game. Is that more of a factor this week with Central Connecticut State having five guys who play 30 minutes or more a game? I've seen all of their games and I've yet to see them get tired. <laughs> so they're a team that is pretty resilient that way, but we'll find out. Uh, I also think that we will put more stress and pressure on them and bringing the ball back at them than maybe some of the other people that they have played. Uh, as you saw in the North Carolina game, there were a lot of strike back baskets and opportunities for us to try to get back quickly off the make or the miss, and we like to put pressure on people that way. So we'll add that defensive fatigue component probably to them, maybe a little bit more than their other opponents have. Is that something you're looking to see, uh, looking to see these guys get tired for the first time this year by the end of this game? <laughs> that would be nice. I think what fatigue does is it, it drops your shooting percentage. Uh, those legs start to get a little bit heavier. It's tougher to make jump shots. But I would say this. I think we've got some guys that if they had to will themselves through 40 minutes of a game playing the way that we play, I think they could do it. So I think we'll find out 
what their mental conditioning is in that regard. But they may go to their bench a little bit more than they have just because they may have to, whereas maybe in those other games they didn't have to as much. So we'll have to wait and see. You talked about being able to come at teams in waves. What is your feeling watching this team when you think back also to the first team when you guys got here that could not come at teams in waves? What What is your feeling? Is it a feeling of uh, relief? Is it, you know, just how, how do you go about watching this team? We obviously have more talent, more athletic ability, and we have more in, from a number standpoint uh, than we had maybe early on in our tenure here. But I think it's great for competition. I think if you are a highly regarded player and you think you are a highly regarded player, the competition is created on a daily basis without any of the coaches trying to create it. Whereas early on, we really had to create the competition level and uh, the intensity level and that type of thing. And, we haven't had to do that necessarily with this group. And so they know that every day that they come here, they're either fighting for minutes, they're fighting to be that starter, that guy that's getting the lead minutes. And then what happens is not only are we able to hold you more accountable defensively, which we have been able to, but we also bring guys off the bench that can score and shoot the ball. I guess how much is it, uh, do you personally feel the pride of watching what you guys have developed as it's in motion? I would say this. Uh, I think it's very rarely done. Usually you set it up for the next guy. Uh, so I think that's a, a credit to Coach Crean because the first day we started working and we started doing workouts, he hasn't changed one bit from that day that he's walked through that door, no matter what the talent level was or where we were at depth-wise or any of that. He expected to win every game. and He expected an intensity and a standard of performance every single day and it's carried itself out. And what you find is then when you have players that carry that out and you become player driven as much as you are coach driven, then you have a chance to be a pretty special basketball team. You mentioned Vanalis, what's they obviously got the Hunter kid as well, basically. What's you know, what are some of his strengths, I guess, and how do those two kind of work together and make him tough to defend both of those guys? Well Vanalis is averaging twenty one shots a game, and I want to say Hunter's at around seventeen or so. Uh, he's a little bit different in that He's more of their power forward. He doesn't post up a lot, but he will post you up depending on what the matchup is. And he does a really good job of catching and driving the ball. He primarily drives it left, even though he's right-handed. I think he feels more comfortable going to his left. And he will take some shots that are very tough that he will also make. And I think what you have to tell your defensive players is, if you make it a difficult shot and he still makes it, you can't let that bother you. I think a lot of it has to do with what kind of shots are you having them manufacture? If they're tough shots and you make them make tough shots, it's hard to do that for 40 minutes. But if you're making shots that you don't have to work for, then I think your confidence level grows. And just as the rim gets smaller when you're not making shots, when you start making shots, especially early on, I think the rim can get a little bit bigger and you just feel more confident as a basketball team. When you play, when you get two players like this at this this stage in the game against a team that. You know, I guess not a lot of people know. What, what do you think it does for you guys going forward when you get to you know, see you know, two guys like this in the middle of December? I think it's a great challenge for us. Um, I think that our guys are looking forward to it. They understand the numbers. They know that Vinales is the leading scorer, one of the leading scorers in the country. They know that we've got to defend without fouling because they're a very good free throw shooting team. And we've really focused on personnel with this team, they're not necessarily about their plays, they're about their players, and they go and make plays. And that stuff's more impromptu than it is orchestrated. So they've got guys that'll go make a play, and you've got to be ready to defend that. But not only as an individual on the ball, but the other guys off the ball have got to be alert, and they've got to be aware of what's going on. So I was kind of curious with the, this is changing topics just a little bit, but with the expansion of the Big Ten, does that, change the geography of how you guys recruit in terms of do you, because now there's a stronger East Coast presence, although you already have a strong East Coast presence, but do you hit that area hard? I think Kenny changed that. <laughs> <laughs> he got us involved before any of that expansion happened. But I would think that because of where we are right now as a program and where we're ranked, I think from coast to coast people are paying attention. So that obviously helps. But then what you have to have is you have to have people that you're connected with or that you've made connections with. and uh, I think that our staff, having been around for a long time, we know a lot of people in a lot of different areas. And then by bringing Kenny on board, I think that enhanced that. And now when you have 
the University of Maryland and Rutgers who will be in the Big Ten, then I think people in those areas will pay even more attention to what's going on, not only here, but throughout the Big Ten. Any special emphasis with these extra, extra practice days that you have over this, these two weeks? I would say we always do it, but I would say um, probably more than we do when we have two or three games in a week. We've uh, really focused on skill development, individual improvement, really trying to not only sharpen what they're very good at, but also trying to expand their games a little bit, whether it's off the dribble or catch and shoot or in the post. Uh, we've done a lot of things in that regard, and you're always trying to make them go at an uncomfortable pace so that they get better in those areas, and I think we've done a pretty good job of that this week. Yeah, uh, I'm doing a surround pick, basically. Um, I know you, you probably answered questions like this a bunch at some point in time or another, but how just how just important has he been in just building this thing and just the energy he's brought, you know, not only game by game, but also just year by year to this team? I think Coach has said it several times. He started more games here at Indiana than he did at DeMatha High School. Uh, so Vic showed up here with a chip on his shoulder that's bigger than he is, and he wanted to prove something and show that he belonged but I also think that's his personality. I think he's a worker, he's got an edge to him, but he's also got an infectious personality. I, I think people are attracted to him. I think people enjoy being around him. And he's another one of those guys that when Jordan started coming over extra, I think Vic had that in his DNA. I think that Will had that in their DNA. And I'm sure that they knew where they were ranked and what people thought when we first signed them. And now I think there are a lot of people, not only in our league, but throughout the country, that wish they had players like that that were that athletic and that had gotten better with their skill level. And a lot of the credit goes to them, and it also goes to the staff and the program for developing his skills. Uh, I think you're going to see Vic shoot the ball better, shoot it with more confidence, because he does when there's nobody around. And so now he's just got to let it rip during the games, and if he misses one, get to that next shot. Sometimes to be a, a great shooter, you can't have a conscience and you can't worry about what happened before that. And I think he's a pretty conscientious guy, so he's just got to get to that next play, that next shot. And you see how well he's improved in the pick and roll and in handling the ball and making kicks and that type of thing. I think that's really expanded his game, and he's not done expanding it. So I'm pretty excited to see how that will unfold here the rest of this year and the rest of his career in Indiana. How, how involved were you with, at the time with his recruitment? I guess what stood out to you that said this is a guy that – you know, forget rankings, this is the guy that's going to matter for us that, that we can win with. Well, the first time that I saw him play was down at the Peach Jam in July. And uh, he played against one of the Indiana teams. And he did a terrific job on the defensive end. He played the entire 32 minutes as far as with that same energy and that toughness. And he was the type of guy that we needed in the program that brought that type of energy. And... Uh, had that infectious personality on the floor. He's one of those guys that, you know, if they made a good play, he'd be clapping his hands and up into that guy that he was guarding the next possession. And those were the kind of guys that we were looking for to really help us get it turned. And uh, we felt really strongly about him as a group when we all saw him play that he was the type of guy we needed here at Indiana. You mentioned the personality. I mean, we see it here from you know, time to time. But, like, what's he like day to day? I guess is he literally, like, singing a song literally everywhere he goes? Because that's what it seems like to us. <laughs> Like is it is it just constant? Does he ever shut up, or is it just? Oh yeah, he does. <laughs> um, but he's he's kind of the Pied Piper. You know, when he comes through the office, he's gonna stop in everybody's office, whether it's to give you a five or to talk or say hello or smile or whatever it might be. He's just wired that way. And even when he's having a bad day, you you never tell based on how he carries himself what kind of day that he's had. So um, he's been a, a lot of fun to be around and. I think that the campus, the community, I think everybody's benefited from his personality. And then you add to that that he's the type of player that he is uh, really makes for a great story. And obviously having guys like that that are from the areas when the question was asked about you know, the East Coast, when you have a player like that that kind of was unknown to a certain degree, has risen to some, some type of prominence, that helps you in your recruiting efforts with those areas as well. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Appreciate it.